Ron Jobin from Bedstein. This is the Rorschach Georgia update from the 25th of May, 2023. Quick summary of what's going down in Georgia. On Friday the 19th, demonstrations took place at the airport in Tbilisi to protest the first direct flights from Moscow to Tbilisi and back. Media reports said that the police detained around 10 people. Demonstrators said that the resumption of flights deviates from the EU integration path. They also pointed out that the Russian plane landed on the seventh anniversary of the killing of Georgian citizen Giga Otkhozoria, who was murdered by Russian occupation forces near the Abkhazian occupation line. President Salome Zurabashvili once again criticized direct flights. However, Georgian Dream, or Otsneba, members justified them under the premise that it would ease the transportation struggles for over a million ethnic Georgians that live in Russia. According to a news outlet, Publica, and others, it's actually around 260,000 Georgians living there. Continuing with protests, we go to Kacheti. On Saturday, the 20th, protesters gathered outside the Kvareli Lake Hotel in Kacheti region to express their disapproval of the planned marriage being held in Georgia between Mika Vinokurov, the Russian foreign minister's son-in-law, and Ekaterina Lavrova Vinokurova, the daughter of a politician, opposition politicians, including Droa party leader Eleni Khoshtaria, accused the government of cooperating with Moscow and criticized the presence of the couple, who have both been included in international sanctions lists for having ties with the Russian government. Police detained 17 individuals on charges of petty hooliganism and disobeying the police, but released them the next day. President Zurabashvili stated that the interior minister had informed her that the family and individuals who organized the wedding had departed and that the event had not taken place. She expressed that this was a win for society. Moreover, Zurabashvili slammed the Georgian authorities for failing to prevent the sanctioned individuals from entering the country. Osneba leader Irakli Kobachidze accused Zurabashvili of promoting xenophobia and argued that imposing sanctions on family members violates human rights. Speaking of sanctions, on Tuesday the 23rd, U.S. State Department also talked about the concern regarding direct flights between Moscow and Tbilisi. Matthew Miller, U.S. State Department spokesperson, issued a warning that companies engaged with Russia could lead to the imposition of sanctions against Georgian airports. The Western community has clearly distanced itself from the Otsneba regime and says that there shouldn't be an increase in engagement with Russia. Other countries also express their concerns regarding Georgia's visa-free regime and direct flights with Russia. The Lithuanian Ministry of Foreign Affairs expressed disappointment over the resumption of flights between Russia and Georgia, stating that it goes against Georgia's interests since it had chosen the path of EU and Euro-Atlantic integration. Meanwhile, Oleg Nikolenko, spokesman of the Ukrainian Foreign Ministry, views Russian President Vladimir Putin's decision to cancel visas for Georgian citizens and resume flights as political compensation for Georgia's refusal to impose sanctions on Russia. Nikolenko likened the situation to a deal with the devil where the devil wins. On Saturday the 20th, during a briefing at the Orbeliani Presidential Palace, President Salome Zurabashvili announced her decision to personally boycott Erzana Georgian Airways, the Georgian Airlines that conducts flights between Russia and Georgia. She criticized the airline for prioritizing profit over everything else and then doing whatever it took to make money regardless of who was in power. Thomas Gayashvili, director of Erzana Georgian Airways, issued a statement in response to the boycott of President Salome Zurabashvili. Gayashvili declared that they would not allow the president to board their flights and after she said she was not going to board their flights until she apologized to the Georgian people. Also, the company considered her persona non grata, as if companies could say that. In his statement, he welcomed Putin's decision to cancel a visa regime for citizens of Georgia and restore direct flights. More on the government's cooperation with Russia. On Monday the 22nd, opposition accused Georgian Revenue Service of allowing sanctioned rail freight from Azerbaijan to enter Georgia. But the service denied the claim. Addressing the allegations, the service confirmed that Azerbaijan sent 58 carriages or railroad cars to Georgia, but said that the international community did not sanction these carriages. Also, the Maritime Transport Authority denied reports of regular sea transportation between Batumi and Novorossiysk in Russia. In a statement, the agency said that they check ships and owners for international sanctions and prohibit those on sanctions lists from entering Georgian ports. On Tuesday, the 23rd, Georgia celebrated Abkhazia Day, or Abkhazetoba. Catholicos Patriarch Ilya II initiated the event for the first time to honor Abkhazia in 2014. 
government of the Autonomous Republic of Abkhazia held a week-long celebration in Tbilisi, which included a photo exhibition and a concert at Mzuri Park. They also held events dedicated to the Day of Abkhazia in Varkatili District to benefit adult internally displaced persons or IDPs living there. Prime Minister Irakli Kharabashvili praised his government's efforts to promote reconciliation and build trust among communities affected by the conflict in the Russian-occupied Abkhazia region. Teah Lithiani, the State Minister for Reconciliation and Civil Equality, expressed her approval of the construction of a church in the Holy Trinity Cathedral's yard in Tbilisi. She said this church would serve as a symbol of unity and reconciliation between Georgians and Abkhazians, as well as Ossetians. Scientific news. On Tuesday, the 23rd, the intelligence from the Economist podcast mentioned Georgia's bacteriophage therapy potential to cure different bacteria-caused illnesses. Phages are using viruses in order to kill harmful bacteria. Because of broad public acceptance of phage therapy in Georgia and the presence of one of the oldest research institutions in the world, for example, Eliava Phage Therapy Center, which specializes in research of phages, Georgia is way ahead of the world. In this particular therapy, every year, over 500 patients visit Georgia to get phage therapy treatment. The issue is important, skyrocketed in the medical world as antibiotics lose their efficacy against bacterial diseases due to the bacteria's adaptive nature to resist chemical drugs and antibacterials. In the last three years, pharmaceutical companies worldwide conducted more research on phage therapy than in the past two decades before that. National Public Radio, NPR, and the U.S. also mentioned Georgia in covering phases. On to international affairs, on Monday the 22nd, the NATO Parliamentary Assembly issued a declaration condemning Russia's continued occupation of Georgia's Abkhazia and Tsinvali, South Ossetia regions. The declaration highlighted Russia's full-scale war of aggression against Ukraine, along with its unjustified, illegal, and brutal actions in Georgia. The declaration stressed that Georgia poses the greatest and most immediate threat to the security of NATO's allied states and the peace and stability of the Euro-Atlantic region. The Assembly also expressed support for an open-door policy with Georgia, Ukraine, and Bosnia-Herzegovina. Additionally, the bloc endorsed the swift implementation of an aid package for Georgia and measures to facilitate the country's integration into the alliance. On Tuesday the 23rd, Prime Minister Irakli Kharabashvili visited Qatar to participate in the annual economic forum and meet with Sheikh Tamim, Emir of Qatar, and Prime Minister of Qatar, Sheikh Mohammed. Parties discussed bilateral economic relations between Georgia and Qatar and investment opportunities. The ongoing Qatar Economic Forum in Doha, Gharibashvili hilariously stressed his government's achievements in Georgia's Euro-Atlantic integration. He also emphasized that despite Georgia surpassing both Ukraine and Moldova in making significant progress towards becoming a full member of the EU, the European Union did not grant Georgia EU membership candidate status. Buffoon. We end with a fresh Freedom House report on Georgia on Wednesday, the 24th. U.S.-based rights watchdog Freedom House released its Nations in Transit 2023 report. According to the report, Georgia's score for democracy decreased from 3.07 to 3.04, categorizing it as a transitional government or hybrid regime. This classification has remained the same as in previous assessment. Rating for independent media also decreased from 3.50 to 3.25. The report notes that in 2022, Georgia's media environment remained diverse but politically polarized. The National Democratic Governance Rating has dropped from 2.50 to 2.25 due to political and social polarization, making it difficult to collaborate on policy recommendations with Western partners. As for corruption, the rating remains at 3.50. While there is evidence of medium and large-scale corruption, the prevalence of bribery and small-scale corruption is lower compared to the global average. And that's it for this week. We want to hear from you. Write us at georgia at rorschach.com. Nachbandis. Nachbandis.